In 20th century Venice, Mariano Fortuny revolutionized pleating with his iconic Delphos dress. In the next century, Isimiyaki introduces innovative pleats please collection. Today, we'll be cooking up our own pleated fabric while also exploring the legacies of these two master pleaters. Let's get started. To transform into pleats, I'm using this fabric, which is a mix of rayon, linen, and polyester dyed with apricot leaves. To begin, let's diligently mark out horizontal lines using a water-soluble pen. The closer together the lines, the tighter the pleats will be. Pleats involve folding a garment multiple times to create this volume, stretch, and movement. The Delphos gown, created by Mariano Fortuny and his wife Henriette Nigrin in 1907, was a true wearable sculpture. His designs deviated from the fashion trends of the Edwardian era and aligned with the dress reform movement, advocating for more natural and less structured attire. Once all our fabric is lined, baste each row using thick thread. Based on the 1909 patent for Fortuny's pleats, we can make an educated guess that panels of silk were loosely sewn by hand with a thick basting thread as well. When the stitch reached the edge, the needle was then reversed to about three quarters of an inch above the last line of stitches, and then a new row was made. So this process continued back and forth in a zigzag fashion throughout the entire length of the fabric. Fortuny's work was described as simple, timeless, vertical, perfectly complementing the human form. Here, Gloria Vanderbilt was famously photographed by Richard Avedon in her Fortuny dresses for Vogue's December 1969 issue. Supermodel Tina Chow became a collector of Fortuny pieces in the 1970s. Her efforts not only included restoring them, but also wearing them to very high profile events and to Mr. Chow's where she was most nights. I'm quite a realistic person. I'm not aiming for Fortuny pleats here. If our pleats can turn out looking like drunk mushrooms, I will be happy. Now, a quick detour to the kitchen to cook up some vinegar starch potion. I can't let you go. I can't let you go, baby. Can't let you go. I just want to tell you that. I can't let you go. No, 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 no. I can't let you go. Yeah. When I was down and down along came you. Though you might be a liar and a cheater too. I just can't quit you now cause I love you Yes I do Back to the studio. Spray generously with the concoction we just brewed. The vinegar will hold any pleats we create and the starch will add crispness. The liquid in general will help us get rid of all the water soluble pen marks from earlier. Gather the pleats by pulling the basting threads two or three at a time until everything is appropriately compact. Based on the patent graphics that I studied, I guess Fortuny must have passed his then through heated ceramics. I guess I could go out and buy a hair straightener, but for today, for now, I just did a cheeky preheat with my iron on both sides, mostly to bring out some more sharp angles in the folds. Find the closest long stick around and begin twisting and tying our pleats into bulbs on it. They should look like little onions. Delicious. Leave to dry overnight. Isimiyaki's Pleats Please line, which was launched in 1993, distinguished itself from the Fortuny method in that he pleated the finished garment instead of the fabric. So the garments were constructed two to three times larger than their intended size and then carefully folded between layers of paper before being placed into a heat press. This technique results in permanently pleated garments that can be safely washed and air dried without losing their shape, which to this day make Isimiyaki pieces super great for traveling. You just kind of squash it up, throw in your suitcase, and packing's done. A new day is upon us. Time to untie our onions. I'm wearing surgical gloves as a paranoid precaution in case the mild heat of my hands would dissolve the pleats. Once all untied, let's head back into the kitchen. Place pleats into a baking dish and into the oven, along with a bowl of water to prevent any potential fires. 
Then I bake the pleats at 150 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. In the heat, the plastic part, that is the polyester, gets heated up and its molecules loosen up. They'll solidify again in their new form once cooled. Once the time is up, take out our baked pleats and leave to cool overnight. Yet another fresh day is upon us, and this time we're finally unwrapping our onions. Pure polyester is actually the most suitable material for achieving perfectly symmetrical pleats. The creases remain intact even after washing, creating a very permanent effect. But I'm also picky and I don't like wearing full-on polyester or full-on plastic. So here we are with our mutt fabric. The pleats turned out so compact, so crisp, so bouncy. Even with a 10 to 1 water to vinegar ratio, the vinegar dilution still worked its magic. Now they're ready to be transformed into any garment of choice. Dress, top, skirt, or like you'll see in my next video, a jacket dedicated to a very special style icon. If you're able to, definitely check out the Palazzo Fortuni Museum in Venice. It houses Fortuni's life works and curated archives and personal art collection. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment, and give this a likey like. I'll see you in my next one. Bye!